Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to be going over procedural turns and holding in lieu of procedural turns. These are two types of uh, tasks or maneuvers that you have to do uh, while working on your instrument rating and flying instrument approaches. So I'm going to go over what they are and how we fly them. So follow along. Okay, let's get into it. Procedural turns and holding in lieu of procedural turns. So first, procedure turns and holds in lieu of procedure turns are fully explained in the AIM manual section 5-4-9. So if you want more details than what I'm going to go over today, check out the AIM. Uh, so the AIM describes the purpose and how to actually fly these particular maneuvers. Uh, procedure turns are identified by bold lines with a barb on one end of it, as you see here by the red arrow. Um, the Hold in lieu of procedural turn is identified by a bold line holding pattern, as you can see here uh, by the blue arrow. And it's, I want to be clear that um, procedural uh, holds um, are, again, identified by the bold uh, circle or bold uh, racetrack, um, not to be confused with the kind of dotted or dashed hold associated with a mist or the thin solid line associated with an arrival hold. Um, so, again, these procedural turns and holding procedural turns prescribe um, when it's necessary to do a reverse direction to establish an aircraft inbound on an intermediate or final approach course while flying an instrument approach procedure. So sometimes when you're um, approaching an initial approach fix, the heading that you're particularly on doesn't lend you to just turn inbound on the course. And so uh, the FAA has come up with these procedural turns to allow you to get um, better established on the approach before uh, turning inbound to the uh, inbound course and ultimately to the airport. So what is a procedure turn? So again, it's a maneuver prescribed when necessary to reverse direction to establish the aircraft inbound on an intermediate or final approach course. It's a required maneuver when depicted on an approach chart unless ATC's cleared you uh, for a straight in approach. So if you see of anything that's bold on the approach plate, that's a, a required part of the maneuver of the approach. And unless you're from ATC otherwise, you're going to be flying it. Um, on the U.S. government charts, uh, the, FAA, uh, the, the FAA's um, so instrument approach charts, um, you'll see a barbed arrow. This indicates the maneuvering side of the outbound course in which the procedure turn is made. Uh, you can turn either left or right, depending how far you want to be away from um, <clears throat> Um, the inbound uh, initial approach fix, but it's it's totally up to you. It's just that you need to do it on the in like this example here, the bottom side of the inbound course. So how do we actually fly the procedure? Um, the altitude prescribed for the procedure turn is a minimum altitude until the aircraft is established on the inbound course. So if the altitude said 3,500 to fly outbound on, you're not going to start your descent. Uh, down to like 2100 in this example here until you've established back on the inbound course. Uh, you must complete um, the turn back in within the distance specified in the profile view. And as you can see here, um, you need to stay within 10 nautical miles of the final approach fix, the Concord VOR in this case. A one minute time 45 degree turn on the barb leg should be executed before turning uh, 180 degrees back toward the inbound course. Again, ultimately, the procedure can be done um, by making an 80-degree turn to the right or left, followed by a 260-degree turn back toward the inbound course. Again, the procedure turn can be made either way back towards the inbound course, depending on how far out you are um, to intercept the inbound course. Again, just don't want it beyond the um, specified maximum distance, in this case, in this example, 10 nautical miles. The maximum speed you should be flying a uh, procedural turn is less than uh, 200, 200 knots or less. This is basically going to make sure that you stay within the protected airspace during the maneuver. The procedure turn is not permitted when the symbol no PT is depicted on the initial segment being used, a radar vector to the final approach course is provided by ATC, or conducting a timed approach from a holding fix. Now let's go over what a hold in lieu of procedure turn is, or H-I-L-P-T as the acronym is. Um, prescribe when necessary to reverse direction to establish the aircraft inbound on an intermediate or final approach course. 
So it's identified again by this bold, solid uh, racetrack hold pattern as shown by the red arrow here. Um, it's a holding pattern that is established over an intermediate fix or a final approach fix. It is a required maneuver when depicted on an approach chart unless, again, cleared by ATC for a straight-in approach. So sometimes if you're getting vectors uh, to get onto the, the inbound course, uh, sometimes the ATC will ask you, do you want to fly the procedural um, hold or do you want it straight in? And if you're all set up at the right altitude, just says, yeah, just send me straight in. Um, but if you've got to lose some altitude, you may want to stay in this um, hold, um, procedural hold uh, so you can lose some altitude before turning inbound in. Um, the holding pattern distance or time specified in the profile must be observed. And I want to be clear on that. It says here in this example, five nautical miles. You don't have to go out that far to make this procedural turn hold, but you can't go further than that. So how do we fly the hold in lieu of procedure turn? Uh, enter the holding pattern using the recommended procedures, like a parallel entry, a teardrop, or a direct entry, whatever is appropriate based on your heading. Fly around the pattern. The altitude prescribed for the procedure turn is a minimum altitude until the aircraft is established inbound the course. So again, you maintain whatever altitude ATC assigned you or whatever the minimum is specified um, on the approach plate uh, for the hold. Uh, must be completed within the distance specified in the profile. Again, the little blue arrow here shows five nautical miles. You can't go no further than that. You could go shorter if you wanted to, but no further. Uh, again, the maximum speed should not be greater than 200 knots when flying the um, hold in lieu of procedure turn. Uh, this again ensures that you stay within the protected airspace during the maneuver. The holding pad direction must be flown as depicted uh, and specified um, on the initial approach fix, as well as the leg length and timing. Again, but the leg length and timing should not be exceeded. And again, it's not required to fly the full length of the hold during the RNAV uh, hold in lieu of procedure turn. Um, you can exit the pattern and continue the approach once you've flown the procedural turn. There's no need to continue to hold in the hold pattern upon passing the fix the second time. Um, however, um, unless ATC has asked you to hold in it or if you've requested to hold in it such that you could lose more altitude. Um, the whole in lieu of procedure turn is not permitted when the symbol no PT is depicted on the initial segment being used, as you can see here by the two red arrows. Um, or if you've gotten radar vectors to the final approach course um, is provided. Um, or conducting, again, a timed approach from a holding fix. So that's a summary on procedural turns and holding in lieu of procedural turns associated with instrument approach procedures. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.